Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have news. So, Ryzen Lab creators of Ryzen UV, they have created, or should I say release, a brand new 2020 version of their amazing UV tool. Now, this tool comes with a couple of things and some beautiful overhauling has been done to bring room for beautiful improvements. Now, one of the very cool things that you're going to find with the new update is the textile density workflow. So this itself has also, you know, made some sense and it is cool to see that they have gone through to implement this in the new release. There's now ability for you to select mesh elements, especially if you want to play around with the UV, you can now simply select a mesh element and get working with this. Previously, you could only select various components that had to do with, you know, the vertices, the edges and the faces, but selecting a mesh element right now within the UV space actually makes a lot of sense. I've always wanted to see this happen and it's really cool to see that this is now there. The ability for you to also select flipped islands. So just in case you're creating your UVs and most times we might have actually fallen into this particular trap where you want to, you know, export your UV or you're done exporting your UV and you find out that the UV that you exported is flipped so now you can easily select you know flipped islands and reflip them you can simply go ahead and align you know distribute and also layer these islands perfectly fine now there is a beautiful autosave feature that is now available there is a debugging feature which you can now find within the preference and some cool you know enhancement also has to do with edge alignment and fbx loading extension that has now been added up to this now if you want to get this too i'm going to put a link in the description where you can find that and with that said let's dive directly into Ryzen uv 2020 and take a brief walkthrough just in case you have never seen this tool before so with this tool open, the very first thing which you would notice is it has a very interesting UI. Now, this is particularly not my best UI so far, but it's pretty cool to see that they've tried as much as possible to make things simple by simply adding some sort of shelf, which you can choose to collapse. And at the same time, you can choose to expand this. Now, if you also want to work within the viewport, you would notice that there is a huge 3D viewport where you can see your 3D object. And there is also a very interesting canvas where you can also go through and play with your UVs. Now, things that has to do with the UVs exist with the UVs and things that has to do with the 3D viewport stays within the 3D viewport. Now, there are still certain things that has to do with UV tile. So in case you want to stretch your UV tile, you want to compress your UV tile, depending on the workflow that you're working with, you can choose to do that. If you also want to get multi UV tile, so if you're doing things that has to, you know, incorporate UDIMs to them, there you go. So you can also choose to play with that and you can get some very interesting results as you proceed working with this. Now, another very interesting thing which I have also found, and I think a lot of people would agree with this, is the textile is just so interesting. Now, if you have no idea what textile density is, it is basically a tool that allows you to quickly scale the size of an island, which is your UV island, or you know an individual polygon and this actually makes a lot of sense so at this point you can simply expand how you want your mesh to be so that you can incorporate a lot more or you can proceed to actually compress this now with this done you can also see that within the 3d section we do have certain selection type so there are selection tools which you can use to select certain things and with these tools you can proceed to just make your basic selection if you're also thinking about you know uh transforming or doing some transforms directly within the uv you can also get that one going now outside that you can also see that we have some extra brushes which you can use to wrap things and you also have brushes you can use to unwrap and also optimize your entire uh, uv while you're working with that you can choose to pin stuff if you also want to pin stuff and at the same time you can choose to protect some parts especially if you don't want them to change some sort of formation while you're trying to unwrap your uv now there is this pretty cool polygon selection tool that has been added and this tool is definitely going to be a huge lifesaver and a huge time saver within the area section you can choose different types of selection type that you can do and you can also see that by this other side of the page that you do have different selection type so you can choose to select loops borders and stuff now instead of going over to the menu to make those selection there is a very convenient space right here which you can use to get this one going so directly there as well you can find out that there are some align tools that you can use to align several stuff and there are also some other you know tools that we're also going to get into so 
with that said let's dive right in and bring in a bison that we have done in zbrush now how you can get this one going is directly in zbrush you can easily go over to the zizu and get this bison so shane olsen has actually made this one available for anyone who is working with zbrush 2020 and with that we are going to simply do some sculpts directly there and export this directly into Ryzen uv so with our bison here you can see that if we hold down alt and with our left mouse button we can rotate we can still hold down alt and the middle mouse button to pan alt and the right mouse button to zoom in and out so very you know industry standard like and it's very cool to see that you can have this feature now if you also want to see this in various shading mode you can choose to see them in those ways and at the same time if you also want to see what it looks like in case you are trying to throw in those checkerboard textures you can choose to do that right now we can't see anything because we don't have any of those features you know for our model and the uv that we have right here doesn't simply have anything to do with that so very simplified stuff that you can actually get up and running with this part shows you your stretching so a very quick one is if you want to go in to start making something like this you can choose to get or you know you can choose to start with an automatic uv now if you have like a very complex model of course this automatic uv is going to make a lot of sense now if you want to use the automatic uv you can go in here and directly here where you have the auto seam you can click right there and you can now notice that there are various kinds of automatic seam that exist so from the automatic hierarchy pelt selection which is this one over to you know the mosaic selection to the sharp edges to the box selection all of these things are here for example if we select maybe something like this which is the automatic uh, mosaic we can simply click right here and you can notice that we have some stuff going right there if you want to use the pelt you can still do the same thing and these tools we go in and calculate based on a given algorithm to see how or the best places they can cut and once that is done you can hit the automatic unwrapping and this will automatically unwrap the entire model so you can see what the automatic unwrap looks like and within this part you can choose to play with your texel density but if you want to actually create these things yourself you can go in and start creating these things really really easy so the first things first is right here i can simply choose to let's set this back to what it was i can simply choose to select a satin ring so i want this loop right here so let's go ahead and select the loop like this and probably hold down control and select this other one so instead of going in and hitting select going down to this part and click on select loop which will also select the loop you can simply use this shortcut right here to select the loop now once that is done you can hit on this button right here to cut it now i know for sure that this might be like a lot of trip for your mouse so the fastest way to get this going is select it hold down alt and x to get that loop and tap c on the keyboard to simply get a cut all right very easy you can start creating several stuff i'm also going to do exactly the same thing here hold down shift and then you can hold down shift to this point and you're going to get a locked one now once that is done you can press c on your keyboard to actually get this up and running now if there are parts that are not connected you can still go ahead select them hold down shift so that you can connect them all the way to this point and then you can proceed to press c on the keyboard so that you can cut those parts so once you have done this you can now choose to hit this button right here or press the shortcut key which is u on the keyboard to unfold this and once you unfold this you can see that the parts like here that we've unfolded is looking pretty nice let's take a look at the checkers so that you can see it's looking pretty nice and you can still notice that we now have some stretchiness going on right here so you can tell by this that you know some parts are stretchy some parts are not and for me i think this is a very cool feature and every 3d program that actually does you know uv needs to have something like this so another way you can work with this too is if you're trying to save time you can choose to work with symmetry so you can definitely go over to the edits go down here and you can use alt s to activate the symmetry now this is one way to do that another way is down here you can simply click and get symmetry locked in and once you get symmetry locked in if you you know go through you will notice that once you go ahead and make a loop selection like this so let's simply make that loop selection and cut this with that there i can also choose to do the same thing right here all of this done we will talk about this new tool so with this now you can simply select a given part 
of your model. So if you go ahead and select the part like this, you can now easily within the UV space, you know, make some modifications, make some changes to any of the things that you want. So pretty, pretty cool feature. And at this point, I would want us to get about two. So let's go ahead and make this two. Actually, let's make this three by three. So actually three by three seems to be too much. So we're just gonna make this two by two. So once we go ahead and make this two by two, it's now pretty easy for us to get some very cool stuff happening. So with all of this thing going, we can now simply use the packing feature. All right, so we can simply use the packing feature to do something like that. Or we can simply use the fitting feature to fit this into various parts. Now, these features are very interesting to see as you can go ahead and play with them however you choose. Now, if you're also thinking about unwrapping one particular model or you're trying to get some pretty cool stuff happening, you can go ahead and select this model as it is. So let's say we want to maybe make some changes right here. I'll go ahead and select this. And with that done, I would simply click on the unwrap do the same thing here simply click on unwrap you know do the same thing right here so i think this as well needs some unwrapping that should be for the behind all right so maybe we need to go in and throw in some stuff i will go in and just simply select this hold down shift and click right here and with that we can simply scale this in so let's get this going and maybe we should also get this going from here so so with this done, I would also go in and select the primitive. So this new feature actually, you know, helps you select this. And then I'll press U on the keyboard just to simply get this one going. So with all of these, I can proceed to select all of them, optimize them if they are required for that. If you want to optimize them, if you want to constrain these by adding several pins, you can use the pin tool and paint across where you want the pinning to happen and those would be pinned if you also want to go through and protect some parts you can you know simply use this to paint that so if you want to unwrap all of this at the same time you can select all of them hit the unwrap button and get them all unwrapped so at this point if there are packing you know features that you want you can simply do all of that if there are features that contains let's say aligning flipping and getting some cool stuff happening for you you can go through and play with all of these features right here to get this one going so for our case i'm just simply going to pack this and once they are all you know fully packed i will jump right here so that we can see what we have so pretty easy pretty clean and so this is the rhizome uv and for the most part this is basically what you would want to do with this tool now if you're also thinking about playing with the preference you can also go over to you know the edit and then you can go over to the preference by default your scene should look like this all right so if you want to change that you can also choose to change that to you know about something like that and get some very cool stuff happening for you if you also want to reset this thing at any point you can choose to reset you can also notice that there is an auto save section right here which gives you time and you can also increase the amount of auto saves that you can do with this tool if you also want to debug this or you want to see some command you can also check this on so that you'll be able to see what is going on with your scene and it's also what's saying that there are tools that you can still find here so for example you can choose this to actually prevent overlapping so right here you can turn this on to prevent overlapping and once you're done creating your uvs you can simply go over to file and then dive directly to export now within the export section you can choose to export this as obj which is basically what we imported this as and then you can proceed to doing that export now if you want to also export the tiles you can simply do that as well so just in case you want to use these tiles as the basis of what you're going to use for your texturing depending on what you want to do you can simply get that one going so from here you can increase the size if that is also something that you find interesting and of course if you just want to stick with your default dcc app you can definitely use that for our case let's say you want to create something very simple as a rook can go over to blender and probably use blender 2.9 and get it up and running and with this really quick you can get something like this happening you can choose to stylize that and after you're done stylizing this you can easily use the uv editor that exists in blender to get this one going the same thing happens for other dcc apps as well but then if you need something very professional that is just geared to creating uvs and doing them very well 
then of course you can take a look at this tool and get going with that and if you're looking forward to getting this tool and you want to play with it there is a free version that you can get if you're a student there's a 70 percent discount that is available right now but you need to provide you know the, your student credentials if you are an indie artist you can actually pay 15 euro to get this one for monthly subscriptions if you really don't like monthly subscriptions you can go ahead and pay 150 euro that would get you this now these tools are actually varying which means that there is a real space version and there is also the virtual space now if you're confused about the two of them the virtual space is more targeted towards animation and also vfx and games while the real space is targeted towards card designers and those working with non-manifold geometries so this is also some pretty cool stuff that you can get now if you're also thinking about getting the demo you can get the demo which you can simply work with and at the same time there is a pro license so this is basically it and of course i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace